This is Arcata, California in the plaza, along with Eureka, one of the two centers of uh, Humboldt County. And there's a lot of businesses around this plaza, a lot of things to see and do here. Um, today is a uh, cold, not too cold. Today is a uh, Tuesday morning in December, so um, this is not the most active it, is, it, it could ever be. Um, probably a lot of footage of this place on the internet and other places, so I'm going to see what else I can see around town. Like I've observed in Corvallis and a lot of other small or medium-sized towns, you can have like a central business district with big buildings and then just one or two blocks out of it, like I am now, you're back into like residential or low-density retail. And Arcata is no exception to that. And right now I'm looking for some pizza. Arcata is a college town famous for its cannabis industry. So uh, yeah, they have a lot of pizza here and it's good pizza too. Now I'm walking south out of town. We're gonna go see the Arcata Marsh. Just a little while that way. Like a lot of the Pacific Coast, we are in a tsunami zone right now. Uh, this, where we are, is a large alluvial plain, um, reclaimed bay, actually. And until you get to those mountains over there, you're in a tsunami zone. Uh, and hopefully, I, hopefully there will not be a tsunami today. So a short note about this, this is common in this area and actually a lot of places in the West. These are bear proof uh, trash cans, also probably raccoon proof on the side. Um, so you'll see these type of reinforced trash cans in areas where you might see bears. Not a lot of bears here, but enough of a chance that one will have that they do this. So a little bit of history of the Arcata Marsh. Um, when European settlers came to this area, they uh, basically really did a number on the bay. And uh, this bay is one of the most fertile and productive areas for plants, animals, and waterfowl um, along the Pacific coast. And it was developed and infilled very aggressively, um, which is why you can see those pilings here. This was all railroads and warehouses. And uh, when that changed, um, what they did is they did two things to restore the marsh. Uh, this is actually a wastewater treatment plant, or there are wa wastewater treatment plants next to the marsh, and they treat the municipal water and they uh, then release it to a series of uh, holding ponds and bays, um, because obviously people, you know, they have to do something with all that treated wastewater. It's actually clean enough that they could almost drink it, but people don't want to do that. Um, so this serves a dual purpose of habitat restoration and it's part of the water treatment process. Let's see right there, there's the tanks. Um, so it is quite an idea and it's also interesting to observe because you have this very natural landscape and then you have things like this. You have just like old railroad bridges just sitting there. Um, and it goes through a variety of different ecosystems um, from more like a freshwater marsh until we'll see more brackish ponds very quickly. Also, this is a bicycle path uh, that goes about halfway to Eureka, maybe a little bit less than half. And at some point it's uh, planned to extend all the way there and that eventually there will be a bicycle pedestrian path pretty much the length of Humboldt County. So obviously an area like this is quite beneficial to waterfowl, very popular. We can see a large flock out there. And uh, some of these I can tell what they are. Some of them are just mallard. Uh, there might be Canada goose there, um, but there's also probably much rarer waterfowl here. I can't identify along with waterfowl. There's obviously a lot of songbirds in this place, common and less common. So on this side, there's a freshwater pond. And on this side, this is not the open ocean, but the open bay. So that is salt water. Uh, a little bit less salty than, you know, open ocean water, but that is salt water. 
And then over there, that line of hills, that is Eureka across the bay. And over there, that is Samoa and Manila Peninsula. Here we have an egret. Not a rare bird. It's a common bird that can like, you know, just live in a neighborhood. So it's not that uncommon to see it in like, you know, one of the best wildlife refuges in the uh, United States. But I'm still interested in seeing it. And it's flying away to find food elsewhere. So along with this being a zone with a lot of birds, there's also going to be mammals. It's just otter crossing. Um, mammals tend to be a little bit more nocturnal, a little bit more shy, so I don't know if I'll see any, but they are here. Here's another egret, and this one is waiting. I don't know how long I'd have to keep recording to see it stab downward. So I am at a trail that projects out into the middle of the marsh. There's a lot of different ecosystems in the Arcata Marsh, um, and even though I'm probably spending too much time showing them, I'm also not spending enough time showing them. Uh, but to say the least, it's a nice place to have right next to the city. You can walk here. So it's one of the many good amenities about Arcata. And I'm going to be turning around and heading back to the city and then seeing another one of those. So even though the water is mostly clean and filtered, no direct contact, yeah, don't drink the water or swim in it. Um, and for that matter, you know, even if this was not wastewater, this is still kind of muddy, marshy water. So this water is meant to be observed, not interacted with. I'm leaving the wetlands and about to return to town. Uh, one interesting thing is it is a lot warmer here. I brought a button-up shirt and a hoodie, which in Scotia, which is a little bit inland, heavily shaded, it was pretty cold there. Here under the sun, I am actually getting warm even in December. It's not hot, but it is warmer than it was. This is Samoa Boulevard. To my left, it goes out to the Samoa Peninsula, which, which separates the bay from the Pacific Ocean. But that's a long walk out there for today. So I'm just gonna head back into town, see what else is going on in Arcata. We also have two bookstores a block apart. And they're both nice bookstores. This one, however, is my favorite, so I'm going to be going in there. I haven't been there for two years. So much like Eureka, a lot of Arcata's architecture is historic, Victorian style in broad terms. And then a lot more of it is more contemporary, like this Wells Fargo building looks like, you know, key 1970s. Uh, brutalism yeah, an interesting church here and like I always say I wish I knew more about architecture so I could give a you know building by building accounting of the city but that would also take a long time anyway the main point is a lot of interesting architecture in Arcata very charming town so even though this is further into Northern California famous for redwood forests we still have a lot of things like palm trees and stuff, and so we still, in a way, you know, I kept on saying we're out of the San Francisco Bay Area. At times when I look at the Victorians, palm trees, I feel like I'm still kind of in San Francisco. I doubled back a bit because I want to show the Arcata Transit Center. At one point, and in fact I did this, you could go from where I live, Corvallis, to San Francisco, in a Greyhound bus. Um, and that service down the coast has stopped and instead what you have is you have many intermediate distance services. So from Arcata, you can get a bus that goes all the way up to Crescent City. From Crescent City you can go to Coos Bay. Um, and then also from here you can go south. There's buses that go south. Um, this is also the long distance stop for the uh, Amtrak throughway bus I came in on. Um, and then there's like local services that go to Willow Creek to the east to the Blue Lake Rancheria. Um, 
So there's a lot going on. Interesting, Arcata has a transit center. Eureka does not. I think Eureka does not because there might be uh, there might be some qualms about the type of activity that go around on the transit center, um, which a lot of times I tell you that's all exaggerated. Here, I, I understand it. This is going to be a kind of a, a sketchy place at times. Um, but actually, it's a nice transit center. Um, it's a nice transit center for what it is, but it is somewhat regretful that the transit network of long distance trains or long distance buses is not here anymore. So you have to really stitch things together. Okay, I saw that. Now we're going to go see something else. These are the gates of Cal Poly Humboldt, which in my mind is still Humboldt State University, um, part of the California State University system. Uh, used to have its own name, even though it was part of the system. And it's kind of unique because it's not an urban university. Um, it's in a part of the state where there's not a lot of higher education. Um, but it's a great draw because of the great natural beauty. And the area lets it be a um, good natural resources school. So north of here along the coast, there's a couple of community college systems. Um, one of which I used to teach at, Southwestern Oregon Community College. Uh, but this is the last university until you get to Canada, um, unless you count uh, Washington State University in Bellingham. So north of here, the coast really doesn't have a lot of educational facilities. Uh, and even though Arcata doesn't look very large, this is the largest town we'll have in about 200 miles until to Coos Bay. So this university is kind of really an island of higher education in an area where that's not really common. And it does have local students, but also students from all over California come here um, to enjoy the great outdoors. Now we're on the main part of the Humboldt State University campus. Um, like a lot of universities, I said this in Oregon State University, University of Oregon, variety of architectural styles, some more classical, some more modern, some more utilitarian. Um, so it's an attractive campus. I like the campus. The campus also has a unique culture. That's why people come here. And, you know, stereotypically there's some jokes about that, that this is a stoner college. Um, and those jokes are always going to be there. Um, and there's some truth to it, but, um, spoiler, a lot of colleges, that's the reason the students are there. Um, so rather than just, you know, indulging in those stereotypes, also there's really, uh, I think a good environmental, environmentally conscious and socially conscious culture here. Um, so it's not just like a party stoner school, even though I'm sure that aspect is there. I don't really know. I've mostly just seen the campus. Um, and just outside of the campus is something else. So to me, this is also funny. Um, you know, the campus is a little bit more manicured and landscaped to look like California. And then you step right outside of it and you're here in the Pacific Northwest. And we're still on campus, but outside of the main part of campus. So this is right outside of the campus, immediately adjoining the campus. This is the Arcata Community Forest, um, which is a park or natural area for use for everybody in Arcata, um, even though it's next to the campus. And this is a uh, redwood forest along a creek. And it's a very relaxing place to be. So this is second growth forest. You can see a stump here. So probably this area was um, logged either to clear land or for timber in the initial wave of European settlement. Now it's had a hundred years to grow back. So we have redwoods here, um, but in terms of redwoods, these are still small ones. The stumps, which, you know, we saw that stump, we will see other stumps, are what they look like full grown. The name of this creek is Jolly Giant Creek. And uh, it's not very long. It might be like four, four miles in a straight line from its source to its mouth. But because this area is very humid, it picks up a lot of water. And right now it's not running high, but I imagine that at times it comes up very high. I talked about this in Waldports and Yahats and Newport in Oregon, uh, but when people think of the coast, they think of the beach. 
and you really only have to go a little bit inland anywhere in the Pacific Northwest, including down here in California, to go from that beach ecosystem to this very dense forest ecosystem. And they coexist because the reason Humboldt Bay is one of the most, you know, productive habitats for waterfowl and other birds is because of all of this. All the nutrients that are being gathered and collected in this forest and going down in this creek to empty into the bay. So this is part of the ecosystem even though it looks and feels very different. And the temperature is very different too. Very cool in here. So look at the size of this here. This has been undercut and it looks like there might be more trees growing out of it as a nurse log. And this is interesting because we can go right up in here. On another day I might be able to go up further but you can like go up here and you can see into the empty trunk. Redwoods are majestic and comforting in a way as well. So the trail continues away this way and it branches. There's side trails. This park, the Arcata Community Forest isn't that large but um, because how dense it is, you know, even though even though I'm on a marked path and stuff, there's been times I've been here and I felt I was on the far side of the moon. Um, and today, I'm going to go turn around in a minute. Uh, it's always nice to visit here. Wish I had more time, but uh, I've seen a lot today. And so I've had my little dose of tranquility. Now it's time to return back to town. The sun's going down. Even though it feels warm. So I'm going to do something I usually do no matter where I go. I'm going to go into the library and I'm going to ask a silly question. The silly question I wanted to ask and that I got a not silly answer for. So last year they changed the name from Humboldt State University to Cal Poly Humboldt. I think, yeah, Cal Poly Humboldt or California Polytechnic Humboldt. Um, but the people still call it Humboldt State University and that I'm not, you know, being terribly rude by referring to it by its old name. So now you know. So I've left uh, the university heading back to the center of town, crossing Highway 101, which at this point is a restricted access highway or a freeway. Um, and it kind of just cuts the town in two. Unlike Eureka, where this is actually a normal road through Arcata, it's a pretty wide highway and that the only way to get over it is these overpasses. So an area like this is an area with a lot of dining and entertainment. Um, obviously, next to a college, both of those things are going to be popular. Ooh, yogurt. And, uh, Arcata has a lot of upscale businesses or tourist-oriented business. Um, and then a lot of normal businesses. And I didn't actually show too much of the city today. Um, and the city is pretty rich. And one thing about this entire trip is, you know, so far I've shown Arcata, Eureka, um, and then the Rio del Scotia area. And those are all very different as far as the terrain, um, the demographics, the economy. Um, but in terms of even all of Humboldt County, this is just a small section. There are a lot of small communities to the north and to the south of where we've been. And it took me like most of the summer of 2019 to even visit like a good cross portion of them. And if I was here longer, I would see more, but hopefully what I've shown so far has given a pretty good idea what the area is like.